hello 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 hi everyone welcome to bookish realm if you're new here if you've been here already welcome back so this is a video that i think a lot of people have been asking me for lately and i just have not had the time to do it but here we are ready to do it this is going to be my 2023 bookshelf organization overview tour whatever so a couple of things before we jump in I am going to try to the best of my ability to capture the shelves as well as I can. Some of them are going to be a little bit more difficult because of the fact that they are on the lower end of the shelf, which in turn just makes things a little bit more complicated in terms of capturing the footage. I am not going to be pulling every book out on the shelf because I just don't, yeah, I just, it's just not my vibe. <laughs> That takes a lot of editing and it's a lot of putting stuff back and honestly I just don't feel like doing that. So I probably will go through and show you a couple of books that I am really excited about or books that I've read and I loved. Um, what you're also going to notice is that it is not going to be me here talking. <laughs> it is going to be a voiceover because that just works out a lot easier for me to do a voiceover as opposed to me actually talking while I'm doing the filming. It just makes things less complicated. And so, yeah, and the editing process behind it is also just a tad bit easier for me. I know people are gonna ask me like, where did I get my shelves from? I didn't get them from anywhere. These are custom built shelves, which was my housewarming gift to myself. I saved up for them for a very long time. I do not recommend getting shelves custom built because they have a nice little price tag associated with them and so, but they do last longer um, because they are real wood they just I just asked them to paint them white to kind of match the house in general uh, another probably question that you'll have is how many books do you own I have no idea I know it's over a thousand I can tell you that I have not counted lately I think when I first moved in it was close to probably maybe 1100 and since then it's gone up so <laughs> With that being said, I haven't done a found account yet. I do have um, some plans to scan everything into a spreadsheet. I do have a ISBN reader, which I will be using to scan it, but that is a project for like spring cleaning. It's not necessarily gonna, well, maybe not spring cleaning, I don't know. I, it's not a project for today. So sit back, enjoy. Hopefully this video is not longer than 30 minutes. My aim is not to make it more than 30 minutes, but if it's longer than 30 minutes, I hope you have a snack, nice drink, and I hope you enjoy. Mwah! Okay, y'all, welcome to the first shelf out of all my shelves. So I actually have six shelves, and this is the top shelf of the first one. So this is where I house all of my book of the month stuff. I wasn't sure how I wanted to organize them because it was kind of like a debate between author and title. And then I was like, I'm just going to do rainbow because... I've never done rainbow shells before and I thought that it would be interesting to do with my book of the month books. Granted, I definitely need to be reading a lot more of these, but hopefully I will get to them at some point in the future. Okay, so we have moved down to the second shelf, which is just a continuation of book of the month. And you'll see on my shelves I have a lot of elephants because I'm a member of Delta Sigma Theta Sword Incorporated. Then it kind of shifts over into some of my literary fiction. I specifically pulled out A Brief History of Seven Kill Killings by Marlon Jane because it's one that I've been meaning to read for such a long time. I think the topic of this and kind of the reference to Bob Marley in that is extremely fascinating. Also, some of my favorite reads of the past are on the shelf, including like Water for Chocolate and Transcendent Kingdom. And shifting over to some more stuff that I haven't picked up yet, but hopefully we'll pick up soon. So this is where I think I have a little bit more literary fiction that kind of shifts over into my nonfiction, which is one of my favorite sections. Now, I specifically pulled out So You Want to Talk About Race. This is one that I never even talked about on my channel, which is 
funny because I ended up reading this one for work and it is heavily annotated and one that I definitely need to go back to in the future relatively soon. Just this whole stack that I don't want to read, especially Medical Apartheid, that's why I tapped on that one. That one has been giving me a run for my money for a very, very long time. This is another one that I've been meaning to read, Lies My Teacher Told Me, which I think is extremely relevant to today. Okay, y'all, so we are almost to the bottom, not quite exactly. I'm not gonna lie, I shot this from a really, really weird angle, but it does get better as we go through. So these are my classics, and these are my Barnes and Noble classic editions, specifically kind of pointing out the Jane Austen ones there because I've read most of those, but it's a pretty extensive collection. I started collecting them probably almost 10 years ago now. So some of these are very, very old, as you can tell from the tops of the books, but they are some that I am hoping to dive into at some point this year. Okay, so we finally made it to the bottom of the shelf where I have more classics. You see the blue and black classics, my Tony Morrison stuff, and then it shifts over slightly into historical fiction, which I have been meaning to read all of the the Gregory stuff. But it just, it just hasn't happened. And then we switch over into my mystery section. So these are kind of double stacks. So we have the Vivian Chen series, and I'm clearly, there we go, in the back. The same thing I was trying to focus on here. I have my other cozy mysteries that I have read some of them some of them I have not read. And then I have some poetry books as well. So, a couple of these I have read, others I haven't. Just a very interesting setup of stuff. Okay, my friends, we have officially made it to the top of the second shelf. This is where I have all of my romances. I am immediately going straight to my black historical romances because that is something that we don't really see outside of Beverly Jenkins. I love Beverly Jenkins, but those are some old school black historical romances that I've collected. I also have the Kimani line that I've been trying to slowly collect. Now, I did move that stuff out of the way because I wanted y'all to see that I do have this shelf double stacked. So there are quite a few historicals in the back, as well as... I don't know why. Milk and my honey and sister soldiers, the coldest winter ever went back there as well. Adam and Eva by Sandra Kitt. This I think is one of the first black romance books that was published. And I was able to find it on eBay. I've been meaning to read it. And hopefully I will get to that one this year as well. Okay, so this is the second romance shelf. And in this one, I have a lot of my trade paperback romances. And some of my street lit is on here. Some of my favorites are on here, like Birthday Girl is right there. And then I also have the Cartel series by Ashley Antoinette and Jaquavius. I definitely need to go back and reread parts of that because there's some of that that I absolutely do not remember. I also have my Christina C. Jones collection, which if you know me, you know I love some CCJ. And that Deuce's Wild cover is absolutely gorgeous. So this shelf is also double stacked. I have some Scarlet St. Clair and Jennifer L. Armitrout in the back. Okay, so we have moved down to the adult science fiction and fantasy section which i do not have a lot of because it is one of the weaker genres for me that i read in but you can see some pretty popular names on the shelf
and then you'll see coming up NK Jemison collection and then also my Octavia E. Butler collection. Okay, so we are moving down to more science fiction fantasy. I am supposed to be reading You Made a Fool of Death with Your Beauty with Kathleen very, very soon. Yes, I do realize that that is actually a romance title, but I didn't want to separate it. So here's my copy of The Deep, which is one of my favorite books of all time. Sometimes I feel like I don't talk about that book enough on my channel, and then sometimes I feel like I talk about it too much, but yes, here's the rest of the shelf. So, The Grace of Kings definitely has to be one of the most intimidating books that I have on my shelf. It's one that I do want to get to, though, in, like, the next few weeks. Is it unrealistic? Absolutely. Okay, so here we are at the bottom of the shelf. Almost. This is the second bottom. This is where I have more science fiction, fantasy, Brandon Sanderson collection, which... Some of the stuff I do need to read. I also start shifting here into YA fantasy and sci-fi. More Brandon Sanderson, Morgan Rhodes, which I love that series. If you know anything, that was the series that I just recently talked about in a video that I posted that I absolutely need to read, like, immediately. Okay, here we are at the bottom of the shelf, which is where... I have all of my Sarah J. Mass books, which I think a lot of people are going to realize that I own these. <laughs> but I've read some of them. It's not really anything that I talk about that often. I actually haven't read one of the books in a very long time. Also, shifting into more YA fantasy that is more popular or was popular back in the day with Bardugo, Miss Andrew Clare, all that good jazz. Okay, so we are at the top of the third shelf, which continues the YA fantasy. We have Lip of Grey, and, well, I have some other white books that are missing off of the shelf, but I do have some of Grey on here. I haven't read this book yet, but this cover is absolutely wild, which I think it's a play on Lord of the Flies. But I just saw the cover is absolutely gorgeous. I received that one for review. In this next small little section, all of these are like Wizard of Oz retellings, which I had a thing for Wizard of Oz retellings at one point. Don't know where that came from. Okay, so on the shelf we have more YA fantasy sci-fi. Kind of like a mix of everything. It's a lot of some things on here that are random. Shifting over into some more of the more popular YA Black fantasy in science fiction with my less than favorite series being toward the end. So depressing every time I talk about that. Okay, so we have officially shifted down to another shelf. And y'all, this is one of my favorites. I love Ray Bear. If you've never read it in its follow-up, you need to read it. That's also one of my most happily annotated books. I definitely want to do a reread of that series sometime soon. And why I struggle so much to get back on, I don't know. This is another one that I don't ever see people talk about. Kingdom of Souls by Ray Baron. Heavily annotated. Love that book. I need to finish the rest of the series. Third book comes out this year. So, here we have more of my YA sci-fi fantasy just kind of organized by author at this point. I don't really have a lot more reason to how things are stacked or how they're really organized. This is where we finish up that last little bit of sci-fi and fantasy and what you're going to see is that it kind of shifts into some horror, some mystery, 
I am excited to read this book, Reader. I murdered him. The premise of this one sounds really, really interesting, but I haven't had the opportunity to get to it yet. Same thing with Man Made Monsters. I should have read that one last year, but I didn't get a chance to read it. Now we kind of shift over into my YA contemporary, where we will find some of my favorite books, including some of my favorite authors. Alright, so we're into more contemporary here. Some of the stuff is more on the old school side, like Jenny Hahn, a lot of Cody Kepler's work, and I was a huge fan of at one time. Then we start shifting into some more, I guess, hardcore realistic fiction. This is one of my favorites by Evie's Boy, American Street, and I don't ever feel like enough people talk about it, but it has some very interesting themes. I haven't read it in a while, so I probably need to go back and reread it. And then we have Nicola Yoon and more of Stephanie Perkins stuff. And then, of course, my Elizabeth Acevedo collection. Okay, so we're finally at the bottom of this shelf, of the third shelf. We're going to move to the other side of the room in a second. This is where I keep a lot of my books that focus on male protagonists. That one stack. This is one of the older YA books that I have that actually came out in the 90s. It's by Sharon Draper. This is the one that I'll be using for a project at some point this year, but it is definitely considered to be a YA classic. Also have Slay by Brittany Morris, and this is one of my favorite books by her, Heavily Annotated. I also have her other book down there, but I think that out of the two, Slay is definitely more of my favorite. Moving down over, I have uh, Love Boat Hype, Love Boat Reunion. Those two are absolute faves of mine as well. And then keep going into some more realistic fiction. Some of these being my favorites, like We Are Not From Here. I haven't read some of those either, but hopefully I get to them soon. I pulled out This Is My America because that's one that I loved in 2020 but haven't read. Now this little corner is just a place where I keep my bin for my Around the World Reading Challenge. And then these are some books that have been sent for review that I just kind of keep stuck there. This one I got out of a book box and I love the stencil edges on that one. I want to read that one soon just because it's so beautiful. I don't know what the story is like, but the edges of that, the actual like form of the book is gorgeous. And then at the very top of the shelf, you'll see that I have more YA realistic fiction. All of this is Angie, Nick, and Tiffany D. Jackson's books. I didn't mean to color coordinate them like that. It's just how their covers are done, ironically. So I loved Monday's Not Coming, as you can see how annotated that one is. That's one of my favorites by her and made me cry. Shifting over, we have some historical fiction, YA historical fiction, with my small but mighty Rudolf Sepetti's collection right there. So you can see Salt to the Sea facing out, which is one of my favorites by her. And this is always going to be shot at a very weird angle now because I have a dining room table that's in the way that you can't really see. Okay, so shifting down, we have some of my YA nonfiction, which I do want to expand it. And then we get into the manga. So I recognize this kind of just by content. So some of the stuff that's a little bit more paranormal and darker is on the shelf with Junji Ito, Death Note, and then Judge, Demon Slayer. This is one of my favorites, Alice in Borderland. I read this one last year and definitely need to continue the rest of the series. But yeah, that's a school kind of bookend that I received from company. Adds a little bit of flair to the shelf. Okay, we're on the second shelf with Naruto being at the top. Yeah, he's going to kill me for not having read Naruto. Uh, there's some other popular series on here, Spy Family, which had Atelier. 
all the good stuff for me. And then we kind of pan over into my favorite of favorites, which is my Food Wars collection. Absolutely love it. This is one that I will continue to collect until I have all 36 volumes. Okay, on this shelf we're continuing with Food Wars, some ancient Magus Bride, Apothecary Diaries, just a lot of good series. And I love the Apothecary Diaries. It's a good one. Then we're panning over to my collection of Nana. If you follow me on my other channel, which is the Realm of Comics, then you know how much I love Nana. By the way, if you're not following me over there, please go follow. I'm such a fan that I bought volume 7.8, which is in Japanese, so I have no idea what it says, but ultra fan here. So we're down another shelf where this is more of like my contemporary and romance kind of manga. I see a lot of series that people talk about on this shelf. Now we head to the final shelf on the bottom here. This is where I keep my oversized stuff and then stuff that I've been meaning to get to, so kind of my TBR. Okay, we are at the comic shelf, which is one of my favorite shelves. I had some oversized stuff on top. This is where I keep most of my trade paperbacks or my hardcover collections. I try to keep it organized by DC Marvel type of situation, which is which pretty much how it goes. And I apologize for the weird angle at which this one is shot. Unfortunately, it's one of those situations that are on the table. So, there's that. Okay, so dropping down, this is where I keep most of my Marvel trades and my Marvel Myth and Legends, as well as my single issue comics, which are in that gray kind of bin that you see. I'm very proud of that one. That is a Nubia one that is actually signed by Stephanie Williams, which I got because Bethany went to Comic Con and thought I would like it, so thank you Bethany. Okay, so we are down to a shelf where I house most of my indie published stuff. So, Image, of course, being first. I have some Scott Program, Archie stuff. And this is where I keep most of my nonfiction graphic novels. And then we just start dipping into graphic novels in general. This is where I have a lot of my YA and middle grade graphic novels love 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 this section because of how colorful it is it's just one of the most vibrant shells that i have probably the only competition is a ya contemporary so these are these dc zoom ones that are really really great for kids where they're taking the dc characters and making them accessible to a younger audience they're some of my favorites to be honest Okay y'all, so this is where we transition into the middle grade section, which is a lot. So I keep all of my book writing and stuff together from the original series to the, what is it, Percy Jackson and the, is it the Olympians? Who knows y'all, I can't remember the name of the series. But Magnus Chase, the ones that are the Egyptian mythology King Chronicles and then a couple of books that he kind of did run off. And then this is where I also keep my Rick Ryden present stuff. So I just try to keep all of it together. Now this one, The Ballad and Dagger, is technically a YA title, but I just 
people refuse to separate the present series because they just all look really, really great together on the shelf. Honestly, I mean, Rick Riordan has another one coming out in the Percy Jackson series this year, and then also Nico is getting his own book, so that's always fun. Okay, so we are at the top of this final shelf, which I just noticed that I have my Brandon and Bull stuff separated, so I'm probably going to have to do some adjustments and get that stuff switched around, but as we continue to move down, you'll just see the beginnings of a lot of series. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, I am a series collector, but not reader. This is one, The Patron Thief of Bread. I've been hearing so many things about this one, and it's one that I do need to pick up relatively soon. It's a chunker, though. And here we are at this second shelf where I have a lot more of my middle grade fantasy and Eden's Everdark. One of my favorites of last year. It was absolutely amazing. Also, one of my favorite middle grade science fictions, Masterminds by Gordon Corbin. I want to reread that series. I haven't read it in a long time. Okay, so we're down a shelf. This is actually where I have more of my middle grade realistic fiction. Some of my favorites are on this shelf. I'm just a huge fan of realistic fiction. So Genesis Begins Again, which love this book. It is a heartbreaking book, but loved it. it. Has a lot of accolades attached to it. So this is where we step into more of my middle grade kind of mystery and historical fiction. A lot of great titles on this shelf as well. And then we have some of my more well-known children's series like The Babysitter's Club, Goosebumps, Peter Pan, which I'm going to be reading sometime this month for a video that I will be uploading on my channel. And then I have some children's nonfiction right there towards the end. Okay, and this last little bit of my shelf, these are just picture books that I own. A lot of these I have read. They're absolutely great. Sure, this collection will be getting bigger. Stuff like Hair Love, which just knocked everything over, but <laughs> y'all get the point of what exactly is in this section. Hey y'all, so I hope that you enjoyed that tour. I know it got a little awkward with that second shelf only because of the angles. So it's kind of hard for me to really get in there because of the way that the dining room table is situated. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. I just... <laughs> I know that's like a quick brief overview, but I just wanted to show you how I organize my books, how I keep them categorized and how they're kind of decorated. So if you have any questions or comments, make sure you leave them down below. As always, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more content from Link, click the subscribe button, hit the bell for notifications. If you're looking for ways to support the channel or if you're looking for ways to follow me on social media, all the links will be down in, in the description box below. And I'll be back with another video soon. Bye.